On the first half, we're fighting the Ice Wind Suite, and this time we're fighting the Capellius version. The key mechanic in this fight is that Capellius puts up a cryo shield at the start of each attack sequence, and he uses the shield up to two more times when they repeat the attack. Naturally, Pyro is a good choice on this half to break this cryo shield quickly, but the shield can also be broken instantly with a single Usha attack, making Usha aligned characters very useful here. If you don't have any Usha aligned characters or you can't fit them naturally into your team comp, you can also consider using the Sword of Nazis and Quoits. Hitting Capellius with three Usha aligned attacks will also stun him, breaking him out of his attack sequence earlier, which can give you some good uninterrupted time to attack. The main attack sequence that this boss uses starts with Capellia skating out to the outer edge of the arena and firing three animal wind blades at you. Try your best to keep track of Capellia when she starts skating around so you can dodge these attacks. The attacks come from pretty far away so as long as you're watching her carefully, it's not too difficult to dodge them. After this attack, Capellia returns to the center and Capellius uses his own sequence of attacks, this time consisting of melee cryo attacks. These attacks hit pretty hard and are a bit harder to dodge, so I recommend just backing away from Capellius during this phase. If you're using a melee damage dealer that needs to stay close, I highly recommend taking a strong shielder like Zhongli, or a good healer combined with some interruption resist. They repeat this move up to two more times, but you can also stop them early if you stun Capellius with three Osha attacks. Based on this attack pattern, the rotation I generally try to follow for this fight is to set up my buffs, then break Capellius' shield with Pyro or Usha attacks, and finally swap onto my carry to deal damage. While that's going on, I also try to keep track of their attacks to dodge them accordingly. The fight can feel a bit chaotic if you're not used to it, and you might die a lot at first. But once you're aware of their attack pattern and practice with that pattern in mind, you'll eventually find a rhythm of moving in and out to dodge their attacks while executing your rotation. Now that we have a better idea of how the fight plays out, let's look at a few other team comps that work on this half. In general, there are two main categories of team comps that can handle this half. Teams that have fast pyro application, and teams that have a carry supported by an Usha aligned character. The latter is especially useful for players who don't have a lot of pyro damage dealers aside from Xiangling, because pyro is also very useful on the second half of this chamber as we're going to see later. The famous Nuvilet Furina combo is a very strong example that fits this archetype, but we could even go for something like Raiden supported by Jean using Nazis and Koits if we're looking for less traditional options. That having been said, this boss has especially high Animo and Cryo res, so I recommend avoiding those elements when picking your damage dealer. Like we just saw, Nuvilet teams supported by some Usha aligned characters are a solid choice against this boss. You can also add some Pyro supports into the mix to help break the Cryo shields even faster. Nuvilet, of course, is just a very strong damage dealer in general, and him being able to hit Capellius from a safe distance makes the fight a lot easier. Exploring some more of the pyrocentric options, a national team built around Bennett and Xiangling is also a solid choice, since Xiangling gives you a consistent source of pyro application to break the cryo shield quickly. One thing worth pointing out is that the standard national team with Xingqiu isn't really ideal on this half, because Xingqiu's self Hydro Aura can end up getting you frozen, both on this chamber and on the previous chamber. Child National and Yelan National are still great options though. Speaking of Bennett Xiangling cores, a double pyro Navia team is another strong team here. Navia also happens to be Usha aligned, so if you combine it with a sword of Nazis and Koits on Bennett for an extra source of Usha, you can put Capellius into a stun phase pretty quickly. Aside from Xiangling, premier pyro damage dealers like Arlequino or Hu Tao are naturally very strong against this boss. The main downside is that these teams are less beginner friendly because of the number of 5 stars that we're starting to pull in here, but if your roster can support it, these teams can give you a very fast clear on this half. On the second half, we're fighting three waves of enemies, starting with three Pyro Fatui agents, followed by an Aramite Enchanter duo, and finally ending with two Electro Abyss Lectors. This last wave is what really makes this fight difficult and imposes an elemental restriction on this half, requiring you to bring a good amount of Pyro, Cryo, or Dendro application. We'll discuss all the team comp options in more detail later, but for this run, I'm using a standard national team, which is a team that gave me one of the fastest clears on this half. Going back to the first wave, I like to start by attacking from the side to push the pyro agents closer to each other and use some AoE burst damage like Xingqiu's skill to chunk most of their health before they have a chance to spread out. Going into the second wave, I position myself in between the two Aramite summoners 
facing the Geo Summoner while setting up my next rotation. The Animo Summon comes in at a fixed distance from the Animo Aramite, roughly in the direction of where you're standing. So you're aiming for it to spawn somewhat close to the Geo Aramite and his summon, so you can defeat all four of them together. From this position, I use my AoE damage to defeat the summons, focusing most of my damage on the Animo Aramite and her summon because those two are usually harder to track down. For an ideal run on this half, you should be aiming to spend no more than two full rotations on defeating these first two waves, going into the Lecter fight with your third rotation ready to go. After the Lecters spawn in, I use my bursts to stagger and push the Lecters closer together. Xing Cho's burst, Bennett's burst, and Bennett's skill are all great tools for achieving this. If you're using a team that doesn't have a lot of strong knockbacks, you can also run away to either side of the arena to make the lectors walk towards you, and that will naturally bring them closer together. As my rotation's damage starts to ramp up, I alternate my focus to try to keep the lectors' HP as close to each other as possible. Ultimately, the goal is to get them to enter the shield phase as close together as possible and at roughly the same time. After they enter the shield phase, they can't be knocked back anymore, so it's really important that you get them close together before they phase. If they phase while they're spread out like this, it's much harder to get a 3-star clear because you'll have to spend much more time breaking their shields one by one. As they enter their shield phase, my priority is getting Xiangling's burst back up as quickly as possible, using Bennett's burst and skill to funnel that energy into Xiangling. Xiangling alone gives you a lot of pyro application, but Bennett also plays a key role here. His skill has a reduced cooldown when you use it inside his burst, giving you an additional source of fast pyro application as well as pyro energy. And you can make this even faster by giving Bennett a 4-piece Thundering Fury set to reduce his skill cooldown even more and really burn through those shields quickly. One mechanic that makes this fight especially tricky is that the Lecter's attacks drain your character's energy, which can interrupt your rotation and cause you to lose access to critical bursts like Xiangling's Pyronado. Unfortunately, there isn't really a trick to avoiding this, aside from getting used to dodging their attacks. I constantly move around and sidestep throughout the fight to make it harder for them to hit me, and also take advantage of my burst animations to avoid some of those attacks. Now let's take a look at a few other team comps that can handle these lectors, starting with the Kazuha National Team. This team is an upgrade from the standard variation that we just saw, mainly because Kazuha makes it much easier to group the enemies together and deal damage in a much larger AoE. Also combined with the self pyro aura from Bennett's burst, you can sometimes get a pyro infused Kazuha burst, which will really burn those shields down quickly. Another team comp that I really like on this half is this Nahida Hyper Virgin team, which is basically a Nahida Kuki Hyper Bloom core supported by Toma for some extra pyro application. This team has great AoE damage for clearing the first two waves quickly, and Nahida and Toma work together to break the Electro Shields with their Dendro and Pyro application. The main reason I value this team so highly is because it frees up Bennett and Xiangling for the first half, which also benefits a lot from high pyro uptime as we saw earlier. For players that don't have a 5-star pyro carry, you can run this Nahida team on this half while using something like Child National or Double Pyro Navia on the first half. The last team I want to showcase is this Kazuha Burgeon team, which is a bit of a luxury because it combines the Bennett Kazuha Pyro Tornado combo with Nahida's super fast dendro application. The downside to this team is that it has very low DPS when Kazuha's burst is on cooldown, but it does a great job of outputting huge bursts of AoE damage and breaking the Electro Shields very, very quickly. Those are all the tips and team comps I have to share for this chamber. I hope this helps make it a little bit easier to deal with these annoying Abyss Lectors. The builds for all the characters I used in this video will follow shortly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.